prepared for us. So if we check out the standings so far, I would say for uh, from day one, Barcy X Ridge Esports, I gotta say, getting a 2-0. Immediately from the eighth place, they have boosted themselves up to the fourth place. And now, for let's hope for uh, Naga Esports, they can try and bounce back from the first path to uh, rather the last two weeks. I mean, getting 2 1 and swept by AEX, things are not looking so well for them, but for TNC, as you said, great momentum ever since the start of the PGS. Yeah, and actually you have an interesting quote coming from the coach of Naga Esports where you mentioned Naga's past week performances. It's really not about your results per week. It's basically who improves the most throughout the entire pro gaming series. And maybe this week we'll see if Naga have um, shown some improvements. I stand correct. It will be actually Barcy X Rich Esports on the fifth place. So you can see how the thin line, look at that standings. It's a, such a cutthroat, you know, placing, placing itself because if ever Naga does get a 2-0, that gives him 3 points and to the mats there and that can actually give them a chance to still make it to the playoff stage and at this point, long journey in the PGS, it's still a competitive style because of the best of 3 series. Yeah, and syempre binanggit mo nga yung playoff stage, 6 teams will be going to the playoffs and just like we saw in the standings, the points are very very close to each other and every game matters at this point. So let's uh, move on to the next uh, talk right here because in our ske schedules for the first match, it would be TNC versus Naga Esports followed by for match two, Minaski versus IPT. So, Tristo, what can you say about Naga Esports entering this matchup compared to TNC's spectacular performance in the first three weeks? I think Naga is facing a tough opponent here in TNC and we saw the improvement that TNC have made throughout the PGS but Naga unfortunately haven't been able to repeat their week one success to like to really imitate what they did during week one. I want to, to see them go back to that style where Rebenga is not a ganking jungler, can be proactive across the map and really just help all of the lanes of Naga um move forward. But that's a very tough task considering their opponents are TNC and like Rebenga said in his interview, TNC excels at outplaying their opponents in lane. So if you're a jungler, I need to affect these lanes. Mm -hmm. And for Naga style, I gotta say for patch 8.3, we're on our day two of the patch 8.3 for the PGS. And seeing how the Sejuani has been nerfed, one of the favorite picks of Naga, it's actually the only champion they've won all three games. 100% mm -hmm. win rate. So it's here are the matchup rundown for Naga Esports and TNC Pro Team. You, I guess you could say Naga is. Uh, Rebenga is professionally undefeated on Sejuani. <laughs> I guess you could say that, but yeah, like you said. The engaged junglers that Naga really needs to push themselves forward have been nerfed for 8.3, so we'll just have to wait and see what adjustments they have made. Whereas for TNC, they're very versatile as players. You really can't target a player and criticize them for having a low champion if you're looking at TNC, so I think drafting versus their team is going to be very tricky. And note that for, I would say, the performance of Damon <laughs> in the bot lane. Highest KDA, yeah, I gotta say, he is something that you have to watch out for. And it's worth noting that, talking with the players of TNC, it's the fact that when they enter the match, it's the mentality. And I think it was a thanks to their coach, Johnny Boy, because when it comes to being the coach, he gives that positive vibe, the mentality that you have to be focused. And during these games, you need to give it your all. Yeah, and I really think that leadership mentality that a coach provides to a team can be a big help when you enter these competitive matches, but let's go back, you mentioned Demon, right? He's absolutely high KD, and I think we have to highlight how well he has been positioning himself, himself in these uh, team fights. so we'll just have to see, can Naga catch him? Can they? Because as far as we can tell the viewers there, uh, Demon only died a total of 8 deaths throughout the whole first 3 weeks. So. Yeah. Moving on to the fourth week, you can already say that, wow, that's pretty impressive for Demon because he has the highest KDA, only has eight deaths so far, and as you said, Chisto, his positioning in team fights is something that Naga has to point out and try and shut him down. Yeah, but like we mentioned, TNT have been playing very, very well, especially Demon. The key for them now is how consistent they can keep playing like this because it's very hard to keep up this level of play for um, a grueling like four weeks already of the pro game series. Man, as for Naga Esports, they need to step up their game here because their performance have been going downhill from the first week. And we'll see that once we move on to the drafting phase of, let's say, the, the planning phase of for both teams. And sometimes uh, people can say that it's the phase where you can say it's the 
make it or break it. You already know who's gonna win just from the drafting phase. Yeah, and speaking of drafting phases, I really think that Naga has one of the best drafting, best preparation, best game plans, but it doesn't always translate once you head onto the rift. We'll just have to wait and see as we go straight into the drafting phase. So, any Naga Esports will be on the blue side for the first game, whereas TNC will be on the red side. Okay, so an opening Yasuo ban. <laughs> Targeted at his. Yeah, this is actually what I wanted to talk about for TNC. They have the confidence. They have, let's say, the playfulness with teams. The, the mentality is all there. Why does the Yasuo pick work? It's because they've been practicing all this time. Practicing and practicing. Being the same page. That synergy that TNC has. I think that's why they're putting out some respect bands out there. Yeah, but speaking of respect bands, TNC have already banned out the Sejuani of Rebenga. This is the only champion Naga has won on this split. Let's see how this will affect the mentality Ooh. of Naga Esports. They will pick up the Tom Kench for the first pick, but an immediate response by TNC, pick up the Braum for Arthros. And at this point, I mean, banning at the Zoe is respecting Calculated. I mean, he has a huge shampoo. I mean, in the last games of NA, nine bans into the mid lane? That's something. Yeah, that could really pinch, but looking at what has been picked up here, it looks like... Uh, Difference in jungling styles, as they burst on a farm heavy jungler, Shivana, whereas Rebenga locking in this Zac is exactly what Naga Esports needs. They need Rebenga to be the enabler for their team. And I think Zac fits the role very, very well, especially in the current meta where the top tier junglers have been nerfed. I think that's a window for Zac to make a comeback. And you did say that maybe Rebenga should start playing Zac. I mean, yeah. great pressure in the early phases and also can give the resources to Eco because he needs to thrive in the top lane so that any can perform. And so far, Rebecca has been doing that really well. I mean, giving the resources there, funneling down to the top lane so that he can thrive and perform. And will TNC let that happen? Because yes, they're on the Shivana. What can you say about this, Gisto? It means Burst will just opt to play a bit more passive early game. Just focus on farming, try and get items because Shivana relies a lot on gold if she wants to be relevant towards the mid to late game. Whereas for the Zac, you just need to gank early game. That's basically what you do. And once late game comes, you're just this huge, tanky, beefy frontline that Nagi Esports will have. But it looks like Victor will be picked up by TNC for the mid lane. And Victor has been adjusted and buffed during the patch 8.3. But let's look at Eni's blue side. What do you see, Gisto? I see a Morgana mid for Karke. So this is actually very interesting. We haven't seen that many Morgana mids recently. It's actually a very rare pick. And more of a situational pick. It's gonna hold down the victor, but in the end, I don't think the Morgana will be the main damage source. I think this will rely a lot on Iconic getting to the backline and Luxury just cleaning up from there. And you can see already, I think we'll be seeing the unsealed spell book despite the nerfs. 10% reduction there from 25 to 15 on this Vladimir. So finally, we're seeing Eco not on a tank champion. Could this perhaps change? how any can play. I mean, this is actually a different type of draft we're seeing right now. I still think it depends on Rebenga because like we mentioned, during the previous weeks, Iconic has thrived when Rebenga has given him resources. But in the games, especially versus AEX, where Rebenga wasn't able to give attention to the top side, that's where Naga fell. So in this game, it's I think it's up to Rebenga to try and give Iconic the resources he needs to carry on this Vladimir. So far, here are the su here's the summary for the drafting phase. And Whoever you're rooting for, let it be Naga Esports or TNC Pro Team, let us know in the chat box there. We're live on Facebook, we're live on YouTube. Hashtag any win or hashtag TNC win. Man, I'm excited for this match because, like we mentioned before, this match very important. If TNC gets a 2-0 here, it means they will solidify their top spot. But if Naga Esports are able to pick up a 2-0 or 2-1 possibly, it will mean that they're safer from the bottom of the standings. I mean, look at the polar opposites we're seeing right now. TNC fighting for the, to be still at that top spot. I mean, getting 2-0 right now is impressive. TNC with a new roster, a new and improved roster, is really performing so well in the 2018 Bacchus Pro Gaming Series. Whereas for NE, if they get this 2-0, I have to say, the standings will look very interesting. And the upcoming weeks will be more competitive. Yeah, and like I said before, like uh, the coach of Naga said to me before, it's not about the results per week. It's more of how you improve throughout the PGS. But yeah, we'll just have to wait and see as we load onto the Rift. This is actually a long journey. That's actually the thing about the PGS itself. Because when you're talking about the PGS, first week, great performance. 
This is why we have this new format change. And I have to say, the new format change itself is something that I was really happy to hear. It makes everything very interesting. It makes everything very competitive, Vulcan. Especially best of three, you get more matches, more games to play. You get to see what your opponents can do more and more. And I think we will be seeing all this action unfold once the game is ready. We will see everything. The execution for Naga Esports will be the one we have to look out for. So, this is going to be match one of game one. This is Naga Esports versus TNC Pro Team. Well, let's head on to the rift for game one of match one between Nagi Esports on the blue side facing off against TNC Pro Team on the red side. What can we look forward to this one is I think it will make everything interesting because if ever any gets a 2 0 here, the standings. <laughs> <laughs> the standings are going to be very exciting to see. Yeah, it's all about the standings, but it looks like since Naga have that Morgana, we all know level 1 Dark Binding, very strong ability. Oh, you got to go for those invades, right? Yeah, I you mean, you have a Morgana and you don't go for an invade. But it looks like TNC, <laughs> they also want to go for an invade of They're their own. They're on the same page here. They're on the same page here, but I can see the TNC going the scenic route and just watching out. Maybe. It's a, <laughs> it's a matter of hide and seek right now. Please. Let's see, because... Oh, oh, there's no wards there, guys. But I don't think... Can Hayes face check this one? Oh. They're so close to each other, but I think for TNC, they will go for deep wards. But I Sinibanga. think they're, they're going to meet eyes here. Here it comes. Okay, they see them. Five members collapsed. Oh. Stuck together here, but... Sayang. Yeah, don't go for something too risky. Sayang. Okay, so it looks like... <laughs> in the end, it's actually Naga Esports because... Look, sure, I got two Mystic shots in. <laughs> Just two little pokes. And I think he's running the... Yes, he's running the Klepto, so that's something. And he got a sack of gold. Okay, oh, that's they, okay they won. <laughs> okay, they won. They definitely uh, okay, won. That's a very small win, but yeah. But yeah, <laughs> he got a sack of gold, so it looks like Summoner Swift is in favor of Naga Esports at the moment. Mm -hmm. And for, let's see, how can Rebenka, you know, give the resources, transition towards the top lane and give the pressure? Because... When you're on this Vladimir top lane with the Unsealed Spellbook, you want to snowball this champion. You need to give those resources. Yeah, but you mentioned Rebenga wants to pressure top lane. He's doing the right thing here. He started bot side. So when he's clear ng path of jungle, it means he will end up on the top side of the map. And just like their game plan, give Iconic resources and try and let him carry the game. So I think we are seeing a pattern here for Calculator's pull because from the first week onto the third week, he's picking up these Rome champions. And now we're seeing Morgana. Morgana, you can roam on the Morgana, but generally what she does mid lane, she'll just put Torment and Soil on the backline minions and just constantly shove it in. Victor does have wave clear, but Morgana will always shove this lane even faster, so it will keep Haze from roaming and moving around the map. So late game wise, which side has the better late game, to be honest, because I think for the early phases, we're going to be having a very passive laning phase. I'd have to say late game would be in favor of TNC. They have damage charges in Demon's Varus. They have Hazes Victor, Shivan as well. As for Naga Esports, majority of their damage, especially in the early to mid game, will just come from Luxuria and Iconic having their power spikes. Pero pag nalampasan na nila yon, it's gonna be very hard for them to fight versus TNC. And right now we're seeing for Rebenga and Burst both at the top side of the map. Maybe we'll see a gank pretty soon. It's up for Rebenga to really decide because. He needs to have that early pressure in the top lane. Yeah, maybe we'll see something from Rubenga in the early game, but Burst, he's playing Shivana Vulcan. And alam naman natin, diba? Shivana relies a lot on gold, so not that uh, gank focused as a jungler. And I think it shows because we talked about TNC. The they have the mentality mm -hmm. focus, they practice, they trust each other. And you put that trust on your jungler saying that, hey, okay, lang, I'm just gonna farm my jungle and the lanes will perform on their own. It shows you the confidence, gaya na sinabi mo, confidence na kaya ng outplay ng laners ng TNC, yung laners na Naga, because if you're not providing them jungle pressure versus Rebengo, of course, who needs to give that jungle pressure to Naga Esports, that really shows a lot of confidence, but mm, it looks like they found Burst. spotted by the tree of the NE, but will just back off. No summoners burnt, no first blood. Yeah, I'll just run away. <laughs> okay lang siya. He will just go back this jungle. Generally, though, he'd think that Rebenga would be topside, so it's smart of him to try and go for the Krug's invade. 
So, Grabenga showing up bot lane means that maybe he read that Burst would want to go for that counter jungle since Burst knows that Grabenga would want to play towards Iconic's lane. And when you're talking about Iconic, yes, we keep telling him, uh, we keep telling to the viewers here that he needs those resources. He's on a Vladimir, but things how, judging by the matchup, it's a Cho'Gans. I think he's going to have a good time there. I mean, it's more on just really passive farming, just, you know, push the waves. There's going to be that small window now. wala pang MR sa Icarus. And he can possibly go for an all-in. But eventually, it's going to be very hard for Iconic to whittle down the Cho'Gath. Because Cho'Gath gets very tanky, especially towards the late game. Once you hit that level 6. Mm -hmm. And gonna... now, look at that. Remanga charging it in. Let's see. Could this be a first blood? Here he comes. Misses the shot. Misses the knockback. But gets the elastic shot. And in the end, no Dark Binding will connect. And it's very unlucky. The knockup missed, but the Q landed. He was able to CC Haze. Unfortunately, though, the Dark Binding hit the minion. So that means Haze will get out free. No summoner spells burn. Just a bit of damage. But after the mid lane, uh, not so not a very successful gat. Let's go to the top lane. We're seeing already Rebenga here. In the Krog side, maybe we might see a dive. But look at TNC. Getting the Infernal at this early. No worth placed by any. What a smart play by TNC. They saw Rebenga in the mid lane. I think they recognized that they didn't have any camps to clear bot lane. And maybe they knew that Rebenga would go to top. Yeah, and that's and why they went with a Shivana as well, dealing bonus damage to that Infernal Drake. That thing's gone, and this will just favor TNC's late game. Oh, Infernal this early. I think when it comes to late game, Victor in this patch, 8.3, pretty juicy. I mean, the shield is there. It's really more of a buff. Yeah, I actually played Victor earlier today, and I think oh the adjustments to his shield is very, very healthy for him. I think he still needs a bit more to come back to meta. But I think they're going in the right direction and giving Victor a control mage a way back. Mm -hmm. I think at this point in the mid lane, it's more on control, ma control mages. I mean, just clear out the wave. This is the meta we're seeing right now in the patch 8.3 in the 2018 PGS. Yeah, it's more of just clearing out the solo lanes. And then once a team fight happens, we have to watch out for the AD carries. Mm -hmm. And speaking of AD carries to watch out for, Demon has been performing very well, oh, but it's a gang mid lane. going in. There's the Q. Lands him there. There's the force field there. No stun will connect, but a dark man there. He glances away. Teleport coming in. Here comes first. And here comes. Orthros with a teleport with a bra, but it will just be any backing up, respecting that response. All right, Hayes played that very well to escape that gank, but the response as well from the rest of TNC was really, really good. But okay, the signals in. for an only maybe in the top lane. I kind of tried to back away with the pull, but leave it to Icarus. He knows that Rebecca is there, gives him the sense of safety. Hey, he was not gonna gank me, he's in the mid lane. And this is Icarus really just reading the map properly. Yeah, Icarus knows his windows. Nakita niya na gank si Rebenga sa mid lane. So it means na if I go for a 1v1, kahit may ignite to sa Iconic, I can possibly burst him down. I am Cho'Gath. I have that feast which will deal true damage. And let's look at, check out the keystones here. Ah, it will be Neve running the Glacial Aukman for the top. Kench and yes, Orthros. What a surprise TP there. He's running the unsealed spellbook. Yeah, and even though we are in patch 8.3 and there have been nerfs to unsealed spellbook, I think we mentioned uh, it really doesn't make it fall out of meta yet. I think the pro teams are still very happy to have options when it comes to what summoner spells they can bring. And speaking of unsealed spellbook, we already see Iconic swapping out his Ignite for a teleport. Mm -hmm. So I think the reason why you want to get Ignite early is to get the kill pressure. But you're talking about a choke. <laughs> yeah, he's already <laughs> past that point. He's past past that that point. Choke, yeah. Because he already picked up components of MR. Mm -hmm. And I think Icarus would be just very happy to stay under his tower and just basically not die to Iconic. But CS wise, Iconic does have a small lead of a wave. But it will be a matter of time before, let's say, mid game happens. Things will get very interesting. Yeah, but Cho'Gath really doesn't need that many items, that many gold that much gold in this early game compared to Vladimir. Because Iconic has to carry. He needs resources. Mm -hmm. He needs to hit his power spikes. Whereas, you were Icarus, I just need to ult a few minions. I get free HP. Okay, we're talking about, let's say, the late game spike uh, scaling here. But we got to note Burst on that shipbox. Mm -hmm. Sometimes you're going to see like, hey, I don't think Burst is doing much. But then again, come the 30 minute mark, why does he hurt so much? Magtataka ka na lang eh. Biglang uh -oh. napaka-farm up ng Shivana. Yung tipong hindi siya magpapakita sa mapa ng mga 20 minutes. Tapos paglabas niya, oh my god, it's a fed dragon. And you just have to run away because he hurt, just deals so much damage. Fed in a sense that not because of kills but because of pure farm. More on, let's say, let's 
for when you're talking about Rebenga's side, he's trying to pressure the lanes, but when you're talking about burst, he's just farming. And speaking of pressuring lanes, Rebenga has been trying to go for these ganks, but TNC have been playing around them very well, and it's already 10 minutes into the game. Still no first blood, unless this lands. There's Flash though. Gets the Q, gets root down, pops the stasis, calls in burst, he's coming in, but the last bounce will connect, he goes in with a drag as a set, and now it's time for Hayes to try and think, Judy back away, no he does not, sidestep, flash in by calculated, that's going to be the first blood, followed by burst, cleaning it up for a one for one trade. Yeah, it will be first blood for Naga Esports, but it is immediately traded back by the counter gank, by burst, he knew where Rebengo was, comes in and they trade one for one. Man, that was guy here's Benga talking about pressuring the lane. Mm -hmm. Immediately right there goes for a gang. Yeah, I gotta say for Rebenga, kudos to him. He's trying his best to pressure the mid lane. Yes, he succeeded. Giving the first blood to calculated, but he had to go for a trade here because in the end, uh, is a Fed Morgana is that worth it? He's still compared to let's say Shivana getting one kill there in the mid lane. In the long run, definitely not. Morgana won't be that late game carry. All she'll do late game is basically provide a black shield, a bit of wave clear, and then a dark binding. That's it. But this is calculator we're talking about. He tends to build very creatively with his champions. And now we're seeing, let's say, a revolver and a ruby crystal. He may go for the proto belt rush. It's still a Morgana though. Mm -hmm. It's still a Morgana. You will get outscaled on this champion. There's going to come a point where TNT have already completed MR, you're going to get Locket, and all of your AoE damage just basically doesn't matter. Oh yeah, if you look at their composition, yeah. It's majority of them are just Ability of our magic damage, and already we can see Icarus not opting for the Righteous Glory Rush against the Spectre Scrawl because, hey, I gotta respect that of Vladimir. I need to build some MR. He could possibly go for, let's say, the Visage or Battle Shield, who knows. Yeah, and thinking ko one of the reasons kung bakit hindi nagrush ng Righteous Glory si Icarus, alam niya na hindi mo na magikipaglaban ng TNC. We have a scaling comp. Why should we force team fights this early into the game? And so, again, we're just go defensive. And now we're seeing Rebenga really. If he can't gank the top lane, he will try his best to help this mid lane. And I think that's very smart of him. But if you look at the CS for the junglers, you can see that it's 88 to 64. But now, Burst, I think he senses something off. Stops the repel for now. Maybe he spotted Neep on the ward. I think Neep actually uses Abyssal Voyage to roam up and stop the repel. But Demon needs to be a bit careful. He is pushed up here. No threats yet. Rebecca is hovering around the bot side though, so he has to watch out for that. It's pretty much a death sentence for Hayes if he catches the Dark Binding and then Rebecca follows up with his slingshot. That is just very hard to escape because at this point, he yes, he has the cleanse and the flash. But did he use that when it he really needed it? He keeps holding on to it. It was on cooldown during the previous game. He used his stopwatch instead of cleanse, mm -hmm. but now both the summoners are up again. It's going to be harder now for Calculated and Rebenga to go for a gank mid lane. But, ooh, what's this? TNC have spotted this dragon. I wonder how can they respond, but, hmm, nobody's in the area. I think they will just trade this for the Rift Herald. Oh, will this be a trade? Yes, I don't think TNC will commit to this, but Iconic sees that they're going for the Rift Herald. It's going to be Icarus buying him some time, just zoning him out. Naga Esports will secure the Mountain Drake. Okay, so what value can both of these teams get from the trade of objectives, it will be. Oh, great response coming in from NE with Abyssal Voyage. Goes in by Rebanga, but Dragon's Set will be his escape. Still, will fully channel more guns. Oh, and that's gonna be the last bounce, bringing in that package for Naga Esports to take down Burt. Hayes, though, still gets the kill on to Icarus, and now the chase is on. Hayes is here. Same with Icarus with a rupture. He could not pop that thick skin. Neep gets taken down by Hayes. And now it's a matter of time for TNC to clean this up. Yeah, and just like that, TNC are able to turn it around. Nog Esports, 3 9 nilang challenge yung Rift Herald take. Pero na secure pa rin ng TNC. And with a teleport as well from Orthos, they're able to pick up the win in that skirmish. The, the stun there, the silence, everything. Neep had a huge chunk of great. Grey health bar. Just he didn't press E. Just didn't press E, but he couldn't. He was stunned. He was CC'd. Yeah. And that was an easy kill for TNC. But still, NE trying to contest that Rift Herald from the mountain to the Rift Herald side. They know it. They have map awareness, but was that a good risk for them to take? Because we're now looking at the kill score 2 to 4. Alright, so let's look at how all of this starts off. It's calculated trying to catch them after they took the Rift Herald. But 
um, Burst makes a good use of Dragon's Descent. He's immune to CC during that duration, so it forces the members of Naga to be separated over the wall. And having that positional advantage means TNC in this choke point can Ooh. pick off the members, pick their targets properly. And I don't think it's smart by Rebenga to go back in here because Neep was already down. So a great cancel on Elastic Slingshot means he will go down for another kill for TNC. And great use of the Fissure by Orthrust to disengage the fight there and to deny the knockoff. So great counterplay from TNC, but great response from NE. Mm -hmm. But tignan mo yun, di ba? Even though Karkiril was the recipient of a lot of mid lane pressure, he wasn't able to do anything that fight. All he really he was zoned away from majority of it. He wasn't able to land his damage. But now Burst is in the bot lane. Just clearing the waves. Uh, the wards, rather. The wards. <laughs> the the wards. <laughs> yeah, it's very important to clear wards, Vulcan. Mm -hmm. Extra gold. I mean, 10 gold. And experience. A bit of experience. A bit of experience. And of course, winning the vision battle, very important for both these teams. Mm -hmm. And we did always talk about Naga Esports having the awareness in the map. I mean, going for these objectives. Look at that. I think at this point, they have to start thinking that, okay, I think Burst is not going to keep farming. Because looking at his items, yes, he's going straight for maybe the Frozen Mallet. Yeah, I think that would be a very effective item for Shivani. It helps her run down her targets. She already has the... Escape. Yeah, she, you're definitely not going to escape once she gets the initial attack onto you. And a press the attack. Ugh, that's just brutal. It's more like, uh, this, as the game goes on and on, it's more in TNT really capitalizing their comp, going for the late game, scaling. Whereas for NE, they have this Vladimir. And Luxury on this Ezreal, is that enough? Because you did say that Morgana does not really deal a lot of damage in the late game. And looking at Naga's comp, it's more of the mid-game power spikes for them. Vladimir scales very well in mid-game team fights. Ezreal, once you get your mana immune Trinity Force combo completed, very strong at this stage in the game. But TNC have slowed down Naga Esports. They aren't giving Naga the windows to try and go for a fight while they're strong. Mm -hmm. And now TNC, they're meeting their win conditions even faster now. And looking at Icarus's items, he's really preparing himself when that spike comes, picking up that adaptive helmet. Yeah, and feeling ko na yung tindihan ni Icarus ng trabaho lang niya dito is wag mamatay. Just be very tanky. Can he go for a dive here? Oh, pops the Herald. There's the rupture. Here it comes. Teleport will come through. It's going to be a fight in the top lane. That's going to be Haze and Burst going in and out of the fight. Letting Icarus tank those hits. It's going to be it's going to be a dance around the turret. And Burst takes down Iconic while the Herald is doing the work. And Haze just controlling that Chaos Storm. Benga, he cannot he go, go in on this it. one. But yeah, a great proactive move by TNC. They dive Iconic. And regardless of the teleport from Kralkred, he isn't able to do anything. And with the Rift Herald summon as well. TNC are rewarded with the first start of the game. Can they get more? Rebecca clears out that Herald, but I don't think TNC will back off. Note that Icarus is rather low. Same with Hayes, but they know it. They know that they took down two members of NE. So why not go big? They're actually going to get two towers of that single dive. And just like that, TNC blow this game wide open. And gusto ko credit si Arthas. Running the unsealed spellbook, his teleports have been on point. He's always been able to impact these skirmishes just by having that teleport. And Karkulele tried to respawn to the top lane, but there's so much he can do. I mean, as a Morgana. It's just Morgana. You really can't do much unless you're snowballing. And you're more of an enabler for your team because you have the CC. You have that uh, spell immune shield. But unless you have somebody like Luxuria there to deal the damage, you're really not going to be that effective. I mean, we've been talking about, we've been talking about, let's say, Icarus in the top lane with Iconic and his Vladimir scaling to the late game. But why did Demon, the bot lane, kind of went under the radar for us? Why haven't we been talking about the bot lane, Gisto? Because previous weeks, we saw it. Always say, si Demon is passive lang in the lane. But when you look team fights, you get to see where he excels at. Positioning, dealing damage, just being a great AD carry overall. And it's a laning phase for Demon. It's actually a 90-minute laning phase in the bot lane. laning phase. It's very passive lane, but Rebenga has knock up here. He wants to intervene. Oh, look at Demon. Immediately flashing away, respecting that Zack. That's smart. That's a smart play. He knows that the only threats on the map are that Zack jumping in, and he watches out for these threats. 
immediately flashes away, but oh Iconic is in trouble. Screams, gets silenced. Can he make it out alive? He will use his Sanguine Pull, but he flashes in and feasts on him! Solo can right there for Icarus, styling on Iconic, and man, Solo is hard to get. Okay, looks like Nate will try to get away with a Hextech Flash, but this will open up the Ocean Drake for them. Yeah, and without Iconic on the map, even though he has Teleport, he's dead. So this is essentially a 4v5 for oh, Nagi Esports. Oh, going in, trying to buy some time. He's trying to zone them out. Spell shield will expire, connecting that stun! What a smart play by TNC. They waited for the spell shield to time out. And once that happened, three stacks already, they land the fourth stack. And I don't think Karkin should have been cha challenging that dragon because he was a 4v5 on the map. He was really, he was feeling confident because he had a black shield, but look at that. Nate eats up Rebecca trying to protect him. And there's a double knock up from the duo of DNC. Nate pops that stasis, but it'll be Icarus getting the kill there. And oh he's flashing in to get that killing spree of our unstoppable. And now the members of NE forced to back up. Oh my, DNC, they're just accelerating the pace of this game. You mentioned that Naga have the mid-game advantage. That's not the case in this game. It's TNC with all Throw the advantages. Throw that out the window. Yeah. No one cares. Lamang na lamang yung TNC at this point. Na regardless of Rebenga jumping in, he was still flying in the sky and he's just killed him. He put him in his passive. That's how far ahead TNC is. And Nip even ate him up to try and protect him, but pop. He pops like a cell division there. The passive Yeah, there. it's not enough. It's just not it's enough. Like suppose, so. And I don't want to call it yet, but at this stage, we mentioned the win conditions in Naga, which is a mid-game team fight, which should help them win. Mm -hmm. They're way past that. They're so gonna lack damage moving into the late game. So if Naga wants to come out on top here, it's gonna be nothing short of a miracle. Oh my God! Is yeah, that miracle will have to happen for any if they want to win this game. But I'm looking at Demon's item. Is he going for a wit's end here? Yeah, I think he might go for a wit's end. Very interesting. No Rage Blade for Demon. Maybe he'll get it later because I think he still feels that right now it's still his laning phase. I mean, a 21 minute laning phase maybe. And he's no I longer in bot lane though. He's already rotated top lane. It's still a laning phase for him. It's not just, he's just farming it up. Just get yeah. that money. I wonder if Demon will actually end this game 0 0 0. <laughs> it won't add to his already impressive KDA, but so far all Demon has been doing is practically farming. Maybe that's the secret here. Be quiet. Lane and lane until the 21 minute mark. Tagabag lang yung demon eh. Taga? And that's why maybe he only has 8 deaths in the total of the four we 3 weeks. Because he hasn't been joining fights. <laughs> he's been joining the fights when it mattered. When it was his time, he feels ready. But you gotta hand it to TNC. They know how to give their resources to Demon 2. Because if you're talking about Rebenga giving the resources to Iconic, we haven't seen that this game. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and diba kasi nabin, one of the major win conditions of Naga is trying to give resources to Iconic and let him carry, but because Icarus played so safe in the laning phase, it's very hard for a Vladimir Zak to dive a Cho'Gath, a very tanky Cho'Gath. And when you're talking about tanky laners, Victor himself is pretty tanky because of the shield. I mean, patch 8.3. It was a small buff, but I also think it's a credit to Orthros being there at the right time, and Hayes just playing the ganks where timing his cleanses right, flashing the right abilities. So you really have to credit the players of TNC for outplaying these ganks. Ito na. Baron, though. <laughs> yeah, Baron. And di ba gaya na sinabi natin noon? It's always tricky for teams to set up around Baron. Pero mm -hmm. if you're this far ahead, 22 minutes into the game, 8k in gold, 2 to 10 in kills. Oh, what's this? Burst. He can't die just yet. The Baron is alive, so yeah. But still, okay, TNC has the lead, but this is not yet 100% Baron for... TNC. They yeah. still need to respect that Zack, the engage, and possibly this Vladimir because as you can see, when it comes to team fights, that's gonna hurt like hell. Yeah, feeling ko talaga regardless ng kahit sino pa yung kalaban you, you always have to respect when you approach Baron. And you can't let them give the opening because we've seen a lot of comebacks stem just from a misplay at Baron. But looking at how TNC is playing this right now, I don't think they're going to give Naga the opportunity. This is the mentality that we're talking about for TNC. They have the mentality to be focused. They cannot be complacent. Mm -hmm. And I think just this shows how they've been practicing all this time. They have the perfect sync. And now, possibly, this will enable them to move on to with that victory. 
Yeah, but and I really like that mentality from TNC. It shows you that they're prepared. They really have the proper mindset for a pro team. And now looking at the game, Naga, they're trying to push down the mid lane. And yeah, look at that. Baron, they don't care. Yeah, they don't care. Yeah, yeah take our mid lane tower for they free. They didn't even did they take it down? No, nah, they didn't. Not even taking down the mid lane tower. Now they can try and re-engage, but this is Icarus without the righteous glory. He really was preparing himself with the defensive items. Pure MR. Yeah, but at this point, does TNC really need to start the fight? All they have to do is, is push against Naga Esports. And if Naga don't engage, TNC will just take down all their towers. But if Naga do engage, they're going to get destroyed by TNC. So what should they do? I can't, if I, I, judging by what you just said, they don't have much room to work with, but Rebecca will try to make some miracle happen. Orthros gets knocked back into the terror zone, but the fissure is there for the disengage. It'll be TNC pushing them back. Look at Demon, guys. He's just focusing on the turret, letting his teammates handle the cleanup. Yeah, and it's only Rebecca alive, and I don't think a Zac can defend this with a Baron of 25 minutes in the, out into the game. Can TNC push for the win? And I just love how Demon was focused. Turret, guys, I just want to go for a turret. He would, and they were like, no. no. The then you leaning face Demon. The tapos then, but just like that, how much more can TNC take? I wonder, will Orthus teleport back here? I think he, he will. will. Okay, they're going for the safe move, taking down both inhibitors. The death timers are rather short. I mean, nine seconds left on Iconic, so they will just take down two inhibitors and just back away. Yeah, so it looks like TNC respecting the death timers because it's very early into the game. Alam nilang mabilis lang yan. They re respect the call and let's go at this team fight. And this is where Demon shines, his positioning in team fights. He immediately flashes away from the only threat to him. He repositions, deals a lot of DPS. And just look at the amount of uh, meat shields in front of Demon. He's left untouched. And with Burst farming throughout the early game, he's just able to destroy the backline of Naga. There was absolutely nothing Naga could do to win a fight there. Man, that silence is very annoying. So that's a fight that TNC, you know, fought back. And I guess for Rebecca, he was trying to make things happen here. And now in the mid lane, catches Hayes. Teleport coming in, gets a dark binding and cleanses out of it. That was so smart by Hayes. He killed the minion to get away. Yeah, and just like that, using the movement speed buff. What do you mean by the minions? He uses movement speed buff mm -hmm. from his Q. To get oh. away. Clever. Clever, yeah, right? Yeah, that's smart. Yeah. And now, it looks like Nago will be setting up towards the bot side. That's o the only lane with an inhibitor up. But looking back, guys, sinabi natin, what can Nago do, diba? At this point, I think you have to watch out for game two. Because looking at your comp, there's really nothing you can do th versus TNT this far ahead. And look how big Icarus is right now. I mean, his items beat. I guess he doesn't care about the Righteous Glory Rush because we normally see that and now he may go for it as his last item because Gargoyle Stone Plane. He's just going to be that meat shield. At this point, he done his job in the top lane. Now, let Demon shine. Yeah, and this is where Demon shines in the late game team Ooh, fight. Yes, Runen's Wits End. He doesn't need a Rage, no rage blade. blade. He doesn't need no it. No Rage... Ah, uh, yeah, I don't think doesn't he needs it. it. Just I mean, because he gets the ammo reduction, AoE right there, and Haze can just clean that up. And now, it looks like TNC will be going for a siege here. Naga Esports, like I mentioned, it's a very uphill battle. They need the miracle. Need to um, catch out Demon. If Demon mispositions, maybe that's a window. But given the way Demon has been playing throughout the PGS, I don't think this is going to happen. You're talking about a guy who just died eight times in a total of three weeks. That is difficult. That's a miracle. I die eight times in games on a normal basis. I so I, <laughs> I guess for everyone watching, they understand. You should understand how hard that is. I mean, yeah, in the BGS, three weeks in time, you only die eight times. But normally in one game, you die 16 or eight times. That's impressive. Yeah, definitely impressive. And now, speaking of impressive, this game one has looked very impressive for TNC. It's just, how will they close this out? But for any, what happened during the early phases? I thought they were doing a pretty good job here going to their win condition. The win condition was giving Iconic resources and we just didn't see Rebenga set up anything around the top side. Even though he was able to pull off gags in the mid lane, they were traded back. Oh, look at Burst, solo in the base. And uh, yeah, for Rebenga, he was just focusing on to calculate it on a Morgana, right? I mean, we saw like four ganks in, a, in the mid lane. Morgana won't. Isn't a snowball champion? Like, 
Even though you get Morgana ahead, what can she do? Does she deal absurd amounts of damage? No, will she carry you in a team fight? Evidently not. And now, how do you stop this push? You don't have a choice. You yeah, just be forced back. Now we're seeing TNC already in the bot lane side. Destroys the last of the inhibitor turret. The inhibitor is exposed. The minions are crashing in. Yeah, and Naga will just be forced back to defend here. It's just delaying the inevitable really and at the this point. And the Baron expired, so let's see. Maybe a last effort to come back to this fight. We might see Rebecca going in. Let's not lock up anyone but need Demon. Look at his positioning here. Iconic goes in and backs away immediately. He does not want to come in, but it's going to be up to Hayes with that Victor. And he will try and deal the damage there. Right now, Burst on his Dragon 4. Fissure is there. Misses the timing to kill. Iconic. There's a battle brewing in the bigs. But will be TNC wiping them out. Yeah, it looks like TNC will be going for the end of the game here. Already two members gone from Naga Esports. Unless Luxuria can pull off a miracle here. Members TNC are low. are focusing the next, I think, this game one going over the TNC Pro Team. GG well played for TNC Pro Team and for Naga Esports. This match one game one will go to TNC. And TNC showing right there why they're at the top of the standings. An excellent performance, an excellent game from all of their members. And just playing towards their win conditions very, very cleanly. Too clean. Because when we saw how the lane phase was going out, it was rather extended for TNC. I don't think that's the right word to say it, extending lane phase. It's more just rotations. I think it's a proper way for it actually because 20 minutes he was basically bot lane farming and once the team fights happen, look at his positioning. Mm -hmm. Flashes away from every threat he sees. Just clean play from all of TNC but looking at Naga Esports, now you're asking questions. They had a clear game plan. Why didn't they work towards it? What went wrong for them? So they're going to go back to the drawing board. This is still a best of three. So they have that game to possibly try and force that third game. But still, it's very tricky for Naga Esports given the way that they played during the first game. There is still a chance for them to make this a reverse sweep because this is the best of three series. A mini reverse sweep. A mini reverse yeah. sweep because they can still try and get one point and perhaps take away the match if they really work, work with the drawing board as you said, Chisto, and think of a better strategy or something that can actually be to their win condition. Yeah, but one positive that they did have, they put Rebenga back on the ganking jungler, mm -hmm. can impact the lanes, but maybe this time have a um, more set-up help in the lanes, because it was only a Morgana. And you need more damage sources if you really want to try and overcome someone. And we'll be seeing all those adjustments once we come back for our from our short break. We have been a Shoutcasters. My name is Vulcan. With me was Chisto. We will continue match one of game one after a short break. With a Abyssal Voyage goes in by Rebanga, but Dragons and Set will be his escape. Still, will fully channel Morgana's ult, and that's gonna be the last bounce bringing in that package for Naga Esports to take down Burt. Hayes, though, still gets the kill on to account, and now the chase is on. Hayes is here. Same with Icarus with a rupture. He could not pop that thick skin. Leaf gets taken down by Hayes, and now it's a matter of time for TNT to clean this up. Yeah, and just like that, TNT are able to turn it around. Going to be a fight in the top lane. That's going to be Hayes and Burst going in and out of the fight. Lethic Icarus tank those hits. It's going, to be, it's going to be a dance around the turret, and Burst takes that iconic wild. The Herald is doing the work, and Hayes just controlling that Chaos Storm. Banga. Yeah, I'm this one. Because he has a black shield, but look at that. He eats up Rebecca, trying to protect him. And there's a double knock up from the duo of DNC. He pops that stasis, but it'll be Icarus getting the kill there. And oh he's flashing in to get that killing speed. Oh, what unstoppable. And now the members of NE forced to back up. Oh my, DNC, they're just. The they pace. don't have much room to work with, but Rebecca will try to make some miracle happen. Orsos gets knocked back into the turret zone, but the Fissure is there for the disengage! Or the TNC push them back. Look at Demon, guys. He's just focusing on the turret, letting his teammates handle the cleanup. Yeah, and it's only Rebecca alive, and I don't think that Zach can defend this with the Baron of 25 minutes in the, of the game. Come back to his fight, you might see Rebecca going in. Does not lock up anyone but the demon. Look at his positioning here. Iconic goes in and backs away immediately. He does not want to come in. But it's going to be up to Hayes with that victor. 
and he will try and deal the damage there. Right now, Burst on his Dragon Force. Phaser is there, misses the timing. Kill, iconic. There's a battle brewing in the base, but will be TNC wiping them out. Yeah, it looks like TNC will be going for the end of the game here. Already two members gone from Naga Esports, unless Luxuria can pull off a miracle here. Members TNC are low. are focusing the next, I think this game one, going over the TNC Pro Team. GG well played for TNC Pro Team and for Naga Esports. This match one game one will go to TNC. And TNC going right there.